Hello everyone, welcome to Research Hub. So in this lecture, what we're going to do is we're going to add control variables in our estimated PLSM model. So this is the model that we have estimated, right? And actually, it could be a very good idea to really copy this model and paste it in your paper. And to do so, you can maybe simply just uh, right click here and you can say export image to file or you can say export image to clipboard. And then if I click this, if I just go to my Excel file and I paste it here, I actually have the estimated model, the picture of that saved here. So I can also just copy paste this one in my Word file, right? So I just save it here and I can later paste it in my Word file and put it in my paper directly from here. Sometimes if you have too many of the items, one good idea could be to right click and hide your items, okay? So hide indicators, hide all the indicators, okay? All the indicators and then simply put the model without the indicator. You have the latent variables and the effect of the latent variables, but without the indicator. So that could be an idea if you have too many latent variables and too many indicator and it really looks messed up, okay? So I'm going to uh, show the indicators again. So now, you know, here we have this model, but you know, the life satisfaction variable, it may happen that the age of the respondent could have an effect on their life satisfaction. The gender of the respondents couldn't have, a, have an effect on their life satisfaction. And if we have some other variables where they're living, the location, if they're living in a rural area or urban area, if their commute to their university is longer, you know, these kind of uh, variables can have an effect on their life satisfaction. So if we are not really considering those variables, then the estimation we are getting from the model may be biased, okay? So in that case, it could be a good idea to actually include those uh, in the estimation of our model. So to do that, because here we are in the PLSM uh, to use a observed variable as a control variable, we still have to create a latent variable, but with one item or one question, okay? So when we use only one item, then it doesn't really estimate any latent score. It uses the real observed value itself. So I'm just going to click here, latent variable, and also click one more. And then I'm going to click select here to deselect the latent variable option. So I'm going to right click here and I'm going to call it age, okay? And then I'm going to call this one gender, okay? So here, our age is going to be a our age is going to be a continuous variable, uh, okay? Because I think in our data, people are there are people from age eighteen to thirty four or something like that. I don't exactly remember, but I think so. And for gender, we have male and female, and so we can treat it as a dummy variable. And when you have these two variables, dichotomous variables, you should really code them as zero and one, okay? So then you can uh, then it is really easier to have the, to interpret the uh, coefficient that we'll get from the estimation. Okay, so you should have zero and one. If you have some variables with three categories, then you should have two dummy variables. Okay, so normally we sh this is the rule that we follow. N minus one uh, number of dummy variables we have to create where N is the number of categories, right? So this research method type of concepts, I cover them in a course called Research Method for Beginners and you will find that in a researcher platform, okay? So here, what we are going to do now is we are simply going to drag the age variable here on the age, and then the gender variable here on the gender, okay? And then I can move them. Uh, let's say I move it here, okay? And for age also, I move it here. So when you add the control variable, one thing you must do is that you have to have an effect from the control variable to the main endogenous variable. Okay, so that's what I did here. But also, if you have multiple endogenous variable, for example, here, all the customer satisfaction is endogenous variable, right? Because it is affected by these independent variables or exogenous variables. 
So in that case, it could be a good idea to also create some effects from the uh, control variable to this variable. But the main one you must do, this is highly recommended. If you have too many endogenous variable, then you can ignore it. But if you have only two endogenous variable like I have here, then please have them. Okay. So if you have like many control variables, then also ignore having effect, having uh, ignore adding effect to multiple endogenous variables. Uh, only the main one would be good enough. And uh, if you have, yeah, if you have only uh, one endogenous variable, then of course uh, you add the uh, effect from the control variable to the endogenous variable, right? So that's mainly it actually for the control variable. Okay. And then I'm going to just uh, go to the bootstrap model. Okay. And I have the settings as I have done before, and I'm going to run estimation. Okay. Great. And if I click here on the report file here, I see the results. And as you can see that age actually has an effect on customer satisfaction and the effect is actually negative. So it means that if the higher the age, the lower satisfied are the people with the customer satisfaction, with their customer set, the less satisfied are the people with the bus service. Okay, so that's interesting. Uh, the effect of age on life satisfaction. Here, that's not really statistically significant, so we can ignore to interpret it. Uh, the main hypothesis relationship, they seem to be statistically significant 5%. For gender, we see that actually none of them are significant here. Okay. So, but here, let's say for example, this one, because this could be considered significant and 10% statistical significance. Maybe we can try to interpret this one. Here we see a negative value, right? So that would mean that the one coded as zero has more life satisfaction compared to the one that is coded as one because it is negative. So now I have to find out what was coded as one and what was coded as zero. Uh, to find that actually, maybe one idea could be to look into the data set that we have here. So if I just open the data set, uh, if we go up, I have the description of the data file here somewhere in the published article. So here, gender, actually no, here I did not put the coding. Fantastic. I can actually download the data once again from the supplementary data file and then I can open it. Then the metadata, I can actually see what was coded as one. So for gender, male was coded as zero and female was coded as one. So from here, it means that zero will have higher life satisfaction, male. So it seems that male respondents have uh, slightly higher uh, life satisfaction compared to the female respondents. Okay. So that's what actually we get from here. And if you want to copy these results, you can copy it and uh, you will copy it and save it in the Excel file here. Okay. And you can call it control, CNT, uh, control variable estimation model. Okay. And these values we can just. Great. So normally, if you want to report this in a journal article, you know, how would you report this table? Are you going to really uh, add two tables when you add control variables? Not really. What I'm going to do is, let's say if I copy this and I'm going creating another sheet here. So I'm going to paste it here. What I copied, I copy again and I'm going to paste it in the new uh, Excel sheet here. Okay. I'm going to remove the original model. As I mentioned earlier, I normally like to report the bootstrap sample mean, okay? And I'm also going to delete the standard uh, T values from there. So here, what we can do is, we because we have only two values, right? Uh, yeah, we can call it, let's say, insert, we can call this, model one and then we are going to call this let's say 
model two. Okay. And for model two, I am just going to double check if I have the same order. Bus driver to customer satisfaction, customer satisfaction, then life satisfaction, then customer satisfaction, then yeah, I have the same order. So I'm just going to copy the coefficient of these variables. Actually, I need coefficient and also the standard error, these ones. And I'm going to paste it here. And then I'm also going to copy the P values and then I'm going to paste it here. Then for the these variables, I'm going to copy it and paste it here. And for these variables, I'm going to copy it and paste it here. Okay. Then I'm simply going to copy their values and paste it here. Not here, but here. And their P values, copy and paste it here. And also for this one, I'm going to copy the values from here and paste it here. Copy again the P values and paste it here. Okay. So this is actually going to be my table that I will put in the journal article. Okay. So uh, to look, make them look nicer, we can make this two digit or three digit. Okay. And these are the information I should have here. That's it mainly. And if you have more than two model, then one idea could be to really remove uh, the P values from here. You can remove the P values from here. Then uh, you can introduce the star. Okay. Like we normally do in many cases, for example, let's see if in this paper I have introduced the star thing. Um, did I do that? I don't really remember. If I have done, yeah, I have done this star. Okay, so you see, I didn't report the p value, so I have done the star thing. So you have more than two models. Then normally you put the you put the if it coefficient here, and then the standard error here, and then the standard and the star here. Then you will have like model one, one column for model one, one column for model two, one column for model three. Okay, so that's how you'd report it in in the model. So now we also know how to estimate the control variables and report them in a journal article format. Thank you for watching. In the next video, I'm going to show you a multi-group model. Okay, see you.